Okay, so today we're going to be talking about the controller, and um, it's basically your PID control and your speed profile for your mouse. For your mouse. And so the objective is uh, over the next two to three weeks, we're going to create a system that will make you uh, make it so you can easily control the velocity of your mouse, both the angular velocity and the translational velocity, which is like front and back velocity. Um, we're going to be using multiple uh, multiple sensors for feedback, and we're going to merge them all together in a smart way so that uh, we can maximize the uh, effectiveness of each sensor. Um, the mouse should accelerate and decelerate at a constant rate for both the angular and translational movement. We also will make it so that the mouse does not collide with walls. So after after you make this, your mouse should just be able to uh, go down a straight corridor without crashing. And um, you're going to be able to control your mouse using practical measurement units, like millimeters or millimeters per second, um, instead of using something that's uh, specific to the mouse, like encoder ticks per second or something like that. So you're going to have to actually take some measurements of your mouse, measure the diameter of the wheel, stuff like that to convert from encoder ticks into millimeters. And so uh, the way it works is all this code is going to go inside the Sysstick handler. And the Sysstick handler, remember, is a time interrupt that uh, occurs every one millisecond. So basically you have this one millisecond interrupt uh, it's, it's getting called every one millisecond, and uh, your mouse is going to try to maintain whatever whatever speed that you've given it, or uh, it's going to try to accelerate to whatever speed that you've given. Um, and uh, so the this the advantage of this is that it uh, even when your mouse is executing its flood fill algorithm or doing whatever, it's that interrupt is still going to get called, and so at all times your mouse is going to be maintaining uh, the correct velocity and things like that. Um, and so basically uh, from outside of your controller you'll be able to just set, you'll be able to just tell the mouse okay go to this velocity and then it'll automatically sort of like accelerate to that velocity and then uh, maintain that velocity. So without having to like think about like, oh, okay, now I need to uh, increase the velocity every millisecond or anything like, you don't, you don't have to think about that stuff after you build this. And um, so here's a block diagram describing how the controller works essentially. Green, did you want to oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is uh, the block diagram. How this is a very classical uh, block diagram for uh, how you control this at a mass micro mouse. Uh, based on height and resolution encoder. Mm. So uh, I think the most familiar part for you so far is these two blocks, like PV, right? Which is part of PID. And uh, the, these are two models. So, the, so these two refer to the, uh, the final you know, value of PWM value output after the computation from the entire controller. Then, you know, once, once you get the computational results from the entire controller, it's just applied to the uh, to output as a PWM, and uh, the two model will respond to it as we want. Uh, at the very, at very left side, you see these two uh, rectangulars. The top one is this, uh, the, the, uh, the profile generator uh, for uh, for string for string movement, which refers to translational movement. And uh, this, the bottom one you see is uh, for curved profile generator, which is the uh, profile generator for uh, for rotation action. So, <laughs> where the X speed refers to the, uh, the profile generated uh, for translational movement, and W is for rotational. Uh, why is called X and W? Because you know, okay, let's start with W because uh, for angular, angular, uh, you know, rotation movement, they involve with angular velocity, and the, you know, the units of, of angular velocity is omega. That's why because W looks like omega. That's that's why people use W uh, to help you full memorize. X, I believe, is for refers to acceleration, accelerate and decelerate. So that's what's X. So once you once see, because in the future well, we might just measure, you know, X speed or W speed instead of a translational. So you should know which is which. 
And uh, for those who, uh, who, uh, who took a controller system class already, should know, you know how the, this, this circle may you know, have the plus minus sign. Uh, for those who haven't taken it yet, uh, I've just mentioned here. Uh, so this is just, uh, the, the ideal speed you're generating for your profile. You, know, you decide okay, what speed you want at each time. And this is the uh, feedback come back from the encoder. For instance, you know, because we have two, have, uh, have four wheels, but there's, oh, sorry, our mouse have two wheels, and there's only one wheel each side. And we have two encoders as well. So we have encoder feedback from both wheels. Lab refers to lab encoder feed, uh, lab, uh, lab, you know, the, the speed feedback from lab encoder, right, refers to right wheel, speed feedback, and the one plus the sum them together, you know, as the feedback as the, for, for the encoder, then uh, that use the speed profile generated, subtract the feedback, which gives error. Error is something we don't want because ideally we want error to be zero. So your, your, your vehicle, your robot will run at the same you, uh, at the speed you want. However, it's nothing wrong ideally the whole time. That's why you, you have an error between the ideal speed you want and the feedback. But we should do something to use, utilize the error to help us you know, eventually go to the speed we want. That's why we apply this error as the error input to the PD controller. And then after you do the PD controller with proportional uh, with a with a prop uh, with a proper gate for the for the for the P uh, P controller and the D controller, you will output a PWN value for the translational movement. Okay, what? that's the output for this section. And it's it's not yet used uh you uh, it can you can use that value directly to apply to the model according to this controller, right? Because you also okay for that model you need Use this one, the, the, the PW, PW generated from the translational movement, subtract the, the results from the rotational movement, then apply to left order. And for right order, you have to sum them together for the right order. And uh, when mouse is moving straight, as I mentioned here, when mouse is moving straight, uh, the, 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 the profile generator for the rotational movement should be zero. Because imagine why your, why your mouse is going straight, right? Ideally, you don't want your mouse. You don't want your mouse like move or like wobble at all. It just goes faster and possible. So the, there should be no rot rotation action behaves. Uh, and uh, during the turn, right? During the turn, you should have a value. You know the the pro speed profile generated for the, for the rotation action, which is like turn, right? Like pivot turn or like curve turn. Uh, then the, the 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 speed you generate should not be zero because do have an angular an angle change in terms of uh, in for time, and uh, however, uh, for the for the back, uh, for the for the speed generated for the for the translation speed, uh, when for instance when it's doing the pivot turn, and when mouse is spinning like through the center point, then the the speed you want, ideal speed you want for the translation speed uh, translation movement should be zero because there's no displacement change, right? However, for for curve turn, your mouse is moving forward at the same time. So this the value for this translational uh, action should be a constant. And uh, also for the feedback for for, for the for the rotational movement, <coughs> uh, we have a lot of options for feedback. You know, we can either use the you know the the, the subtraction, you know, the difference between two encoders uh, to 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 use as the angle the mouse turn, or only use gyro. You know, or use sensor. I mean, this sensor arrows is not used when, uh, when making like a pivot turn or or make uh, make a curve turn. But but since both uh, translational and the rotational uh, 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 controllers are used when mouse is moving straight, right? So this is the only time you use sensor for getting sensor arrows. Otherwise, for other cases. Like turn, all kind of pivot turn, curve turn, you don't use sensor value at all. So. Okay, so, uh, but uh, uh, for uh, before you, uh, we tell you how to apply the sensor arrow to, to the entire system, we just consider that this, this controller runs without the sensor arrow. Okay, because for instance, uh, you know, because Mike Mouse has a fishbowl, right, which doesn't have any wall on the side at all. And uh, you have to make your mouse move as straight as possible by itself without the help of the R sensor. 
that's the, our that's our goal to have to uh, to make sure have be able to write such a such a controller without without using sensor error, but only the uh, encoder and the driver. So that's the uh, whole broad background for this. Oh, remember this. Uh, the, according to our controller, the error should be accumulated uh, in order to uh, provide a much more robust position control. For the for the mouse, that's why this is also called the positional PD control. Okay, so Jeremy, uh, you're well, just uh, like kind of to expand on what Green was saying about accumulating it, like this is a velocity, and so if you accumulate it, that you're taking the integral, and the integral of velocity is your position. So then you're applying, you're taking your position, and then you're applying PD. So that's why it's called a positional PD. And so here's a diagram of like what your speed profile would look like. And so uh, the green is your actual velocity. So that's the velocity that you're reading from the wheels, and then uh, or from other uh, other things like yeah, from, the, from the encoder, from the um, from the gyro. Um, the blue is your ideal velocity. So you, uh, this is something that you know if you're accelerating every millisecond you have to increase this and um, the red is basically your distance that's the interval but anyways um, so the way that it's going to work is when you get to this point right here that you want to start accelerating you just you want to create a system that you just tell it okay go to Vmax and then it'll automatically just increase to that point Get to this point, you say, "Okay, stop," and then uh, it'll automatically decrease with uh, a constant. With a constant acceleration. Yeah. So the steps are: first, we collect the data from all the sensors. So you read the gyro, you read the IR sensors, and you read the encoders. Um, then you decide the ideal velocities that you want. So that's where you. Uh, that, that's where you find what this blue line is. So the fir first step is find the green line, second step, find the blue line. Then um, we find the, uh, okay, so let me change it a little bit. Find the actual velocity from the sensors as feedback. Can you explain? Oh, just for the sensor, you know, uh, use the sensor that you collect at step one, right? do some organization to make, make it recognizable for the system. Uh, for instance, uh, if you read the uh, encoder value, raw, raw value from step one, and you have subtract with the values you know, stored in the previous step, and as the encoder value change uh, within this one millisecond, which is the speed, so just like make it make a, make a recognizable, recognizable that as a feedback. Um, so then the, we find the difference between the ideal velocity and the feedback, and that's basically our error. So our error is the difference between the green line and the blue line. Um, and then we input the errors to the PD controller, and uh, that you know, makes the control more effective when you give it P and D instead of just P. So uh, we, we also don't, well, we, we use I in sort of a different way, but uh, in fact, essentially we're doing a positional PD controller, but we're also using I for the sensors. But I'll get to that later. Um, then we set the PWM of the motors based on the output from the PD controller. And so uh, also, again, for, for each of these steps, you're basically doing it for the translational movement and the rotational movement. And so to find the actual velocity, you take the derivative of the encoder count. So you just take the current encoder count minus the previous encoder count, and that's, your, that's the derivative. Um, so the derivative of something is the, the change over time. So uh, time is one millisecond, and the change is just the current count minus the previous count. Yeah. 
do you compute a running average, or do you just take single samples? Just single samples, because we yeah we just want the derivative, so just the the current derivative. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Um, Um, and then the driver also gives you the angular velocity as its output. And to find the ideal velocity, if you're accelerating or decelerating, then you would add or subtract the acceleration rate from the previous ideal velocity. So your current ideal velocity is pl either plus or minus the previous ideal velocity. Sorry. It's the, the current ideal velocity is the previous ideal velocity plus or minus the acceleration rate. And so that will give you that blue line that I showed earlier, where it's just a steady increase. And then once, you, once you're done accelerating or decelerating, then uh, your, uh, your ideal velocity is just set to some constant. Uh, and so that, that will create that trapezoid shape, the, the ideal trapezoid. So then to get the PID input, uh, for translational, there's really only one option. You just take the, the two encoder counts, the two encoder velocities, and uh, that's, your, that's your translational velocity. And, and then uh, you, you, uh, you subtract it with the ideal velocity. So you really only have encoders for translational movement because you don't have a front wall you often enough to really use the sensors, and the gyro doesn't detect translational movement, so you really just have the encoders. Um, for Angular, you uh, you can do the left encoder count minus the right encoder count, or you, you just take the difference between the two. That gives you the Angular, um, and you also have to uh, you can you can add the gyro and the sensors right here also, just like. Uh, um, so that's what it's talking about right here. You take the, you know, the difference between your two encoder counts, and then you can add the gyro and sensors, sensor error. If you, uh, if what's you really, want. what's really straight, uh, you can use all of them. Right, what's really straight for the, for the rotational profile, you, you can use you, you can use utilize all of them. So when when the mouse is moving straight, uh, for the rotational controller feedback, you can you can add add all of them up. To make make the mouse like capable have multiple detections. However, when doing the turn, like pivot turn or or curve turn, um, you should only okay sensor is definitely not going to be used, right? So it's only you're only choosing between these two, and um, I mean either of them works for two wheel mic mouse. However, only use gyro is what you're suggesting because it pre prevent any uh, any uh, you know slippage. It's more reliable. So then uh, we apply PID to the error, um, or PD, or so. Okay, so uh, what what we have originally is a velocity error. So then what you want to do is you take the integral of that, and that's your positional. So you have the uh, you have a positional PD. So you take you take your positional error, that's your P, and then you uh, take the derivative of that, and that's your D error. Um, and so uh, also, when when Green was saying like you here you can uh, you can add your sensor error to your gyro and your encoder. The jack the 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 encoder and the gyro are going to give you the velocity, but the sensor is a position. It's a position layer. So essentially, you're taking PD of, of uh, the position, and you're taking PI of the position here. I think, yeah, for the, for the rotation, I think all, all, all these three are giving you the uh, angular error, angular position. Well, the, okay, well, these two are the velocity, right? Uh, and yeah, the angular velocity error. Yeah. Before you accumulate. Yeah, before you... The sensor can... giving also the angle, like how much you have on the angle, something like that. You step on. Well, it's a positional error, so like, if your mouse is not correctly facing down the corridor, your sensors are going to be off, so that's a position. 
it's not it's not currently at the correct uh, at the correct angle. And let's just see if we find that as an like, angular error because uh, when loss is down and centered, you can't assume it's, it's straight. You, you should be like off. Like, you, should, you should not point to the front. It's usually like you know tilted. So it has an angle. Let's do it that way because it just you know for for the case it just like a, a, a value. It, it's a, like digits output input to the system, but for understanding because you know because R, R minus L and gyro they're all like can kind of angle here. Yeah, but what I'm saying is that the these are angular velocity errors, and this is a positional error. Yeah. So when you accumulate it, you're taking the i of this. So you're, you're using a combination essentially of p i and p v. And so the reason we take the the i of the sensor is that you're uh, so like imagine we didn't take the i of the sensor. We, we would, if we, if our mouse was off of its off of its uh, axis and it was like crashing, it was like about to crash into a wall. It would it would quickly adjust itself because the sensor would be, be too high of a reading on the left side or something, and then it would, but then it would uh, it wouldn't permanently correct that. So like, it would just go right back again because the encoder the encoder would like uh, the encoder counts would counteract that change, and so. What, what the problem is is that your encoder and your gyro are are uh, they're off, and so if you're about to crash into a wall, you want to like remember that error, and so the way you remember an error is you integrate. So. Uh, Essentially, if you take the encoder velocity error, the gyro error, and the sensor error, and you add them all together, and you apply PI controller, that's essentially what you want. It, it's basically a positional PD controller. It's kind of confusing, but you have to like just sit down and, and look at this all again. Yeah. We, we have a position involved, but it's not PID, because we don't have to tune the PI. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, then we set the PWM of the motors. This is we're just going to give you the code pretty much for this. It's pretty easy. You just you, you have some error X and some error W, and then you know you, your left uh, PWM is error X minus error W, and your right PWM is error X plus error W. It might be different from that block diagram, but you, you can just switch these however you want. But your uh, your error W would just be uh, opposite sign. Right. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I mean. Okay. So we we use different slides. So like. So yeah. This is the name I came up with. But Green came up with uh, this other slide that. So that that error x and that error w is not the same as this error x and error w. It's, it's, it's this. Yeah. <clears throat> and then, uh, so this is a really simple way to get the sensor error. So basically, what it says is, if you're too close to a wall, move away from it, and that's it. And otherwise, just do nothing. So uh, that you can get like more complicated. You can say like. Okay, if I'm if I'm too close to a wall, move away from it. But if I'm too far away from a the wall, then move closer to it. So you can get more complicated stuff with that, but um, this one will work and it's simpler. So yeah, uh, you guys should take the time to read all that. And um, I know it's it's like pretty confusing, but we'll be here to help you guys. So um, do you have any questions? First of all, yeah, can you? Um, go back to the diagram. Why? Why do you have to subtract the alpha of the controller? This one right here. Yeah. So, uh, so basically, one one of one of the errors is a rotational error, right? Mm -hmm. And the other error is a translational error. So, in order to counteract a rotational error, 
you have to slow one wheel down and speed one wheel up. So it has to be like opposite signs for each wheel. So if, for in this example, you're, you know, if you get this air W, you want to slow down the left wheel if this is a positive number, but you want to speed up the right wheel if it's a positive number. Yeah, so a positive know. number ma makes you turn to the left. So that, that means that you're too far to the right. So if you get a positive air W in this situation, then you're going to turn to the left. Imagine a mouse going straight perfectly, then your, uh, trans uh, your rotation of the arrow should be zero, ideally, right? Mm -hmm. Then, no matter if plus a zero or minus zero, the left and the right, we are going to still make it the same speed. Yeah. Um, internally, our x speed, x error, w speed, and w error, or omega speed and omega error, are those all signed? Yes. yes. They show up inside, yes. Yeah, because they can be positive or negative. If you have a positive error, then you've gone too far or something, and you need to go back.